What's your opinion on the self-releasing platforms? I already told you, not good. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Today, um, yeah, still the full studio and the construction, still not able to make any music, taking care of the business side of, of my label. And as you know, two days ago, I was in Hamburg visiting my label manager, the guy working for my distributor that makes sure that my music gets out there on Spotify, Apple Music and all other digital stores. And there were so many questions by you guys. So I thought, why not make a special edition Q&A where you ask me everything about releasing your songs. First question for today is what is the easiest way to get your music out there? I think the easiest way by far is to use something like DistroKid or TuneCore. Definitely the easiest and definitely the fastest way. You just log in there, you just pay a small amount. It's really, really tiny, tiny, tiny. But there is also a drawback, of course. If you pay little, you only get little. So all these guys do is they take your song and put it out there and that's it. And I can't emphasize enough that you shouldn't actually do that because by releasing your song this way, there is no promotion, there is no marketing, no strategy, no pitching to Spotify, no SoundCloud reposting, nothing. That's just out there and you will probably have maybe 50 plays maybe of your socials and you're active and you get your friends involved maybe 500 maybe a thousand if you're really good and that's really embarrassing actually someone will check out your profile to see um, how capable you are not only making good music but also promoting it and having a fan base these these things are as important as making good music and if they check out your profile and there's nothing going on no plays it actually will hurt you more than help you. It's better to have no profile or a clean profile than one that just looks bad. And I know a lot of people recommend DistroKid and TuneCore here on YouTube especially, but that's only because they write those people and pay them 500 euros plus to say that. They also offered me the same deal. I said, no, it's nothing I can recommend in any way. So option number two would be the classic way to find a label, get a label that believes in you as an artist, likes your music and helps you with getting it out there and also promotes it. I have a label for electronic music. If you're interested to submit your demo, the link is down below in the description. And I know it's frustrating because most labels won't even listen to your music. I listen to everything I get, but also there, 95% of it just doesn't fit to the label or isn't good enough. So maybe also consider not sending your demo out and wait a little longer until it's, it's really good enough. And I know at the beginning you think it's good, but it's, believe me, not good. I had the same experience. My first three years, I thought every song was a hit and they just sound like absolute shit. So basically when you're in your first two or maybe even three years of music production, don't even think about releasing. Just put it out on SoundCloud, which is also a way of releasing. You of course won't make any money, but even if you release your song on Spotify and iTunes, you also won't make any money and you don't have uh, the full control, like taking your song back out of those stores is a lot harder than getting it out there. And especially those uh, TuneCore and DistroKid guys, um, communicating with them, almost impossible. So if you have any problem, wrong artist profile, wrong track, wrong cover, and you want to change something, it might take a while to get through. Then the third way, it's actually the way I did it. You start your own label, which is involved in a lot of um, filling out documents, getting an ISRC code, getting a label code, founding a company, pay taxes, then find a bigger distributor, um, an independent one, because the major ones, you can't work with them, only if you release music on their labels. And then you get a better service. You usually don't pay per song, you pay a certain amount, uh, a share usually, it's like 20, 25, 30%. But in return, they will do a whole lot for you. They have a marketing team, 
my guys at Hamburg, there are like three people just marketing, a label manager, and then two guys just for the YouTube stuff. Basically, you get what you pay for. And they only take labels. So you as an artist without a label, without a label plan, a business plan, a release schedule, and at least the first five releases that you have to present to them, there's no chance for you to get in there. So basically all of those ways are a little annoying and also with the labels working with them, they might screw you, not pay you, not promote you at the end and you don't have any benefits. That's also the main reason why I started Sign Up, which is like a non-profit sub-label of my bigger label. And it works in a very easy way. You use the same structure as me and my label with the good distributor that does something for you. And we also pitch it to Spotify, Apple Music. We also put it out on SoundCloud, repost it with all of our channels, put it in the Sign Up Spotify playlist so that you get an initial amount of plays. It's a little more expensive than, than DistroKid or TuneCore. It's 6 euros per song, but in return you get like the full big service as if it was your own label. And also the rights are yours, all of the profit is yours. Um, it's really a, a non-profit label helping out young artists because I know how hard it actually is or was. I had labels, I still have labels that owe me a huge amount of money, but it's too much trouble to try to force them to pay you, especially when they're abroad. So um, making my own was for me at least the best option. If you're interested, the link for sign up is also in the description. There is like a small application process. We won't take every song. It's not open to the public. It's only here for the viewers and give us place at least one week to check out your demo and then let you know how we proceed. And that was just the first question, but I think with that, everything about how to get your songs out there in an easy and fair way is clarified. Now let's see what else we got. Since Spotify is not available in India and SoundCloud not very convenient for general people, which platform do I look up to? I don't know if Apple Music is offering a service in India. If yes, go with Apple Music. Streaming, I mean, there's just Apple Music and, and Spotify, Deezer, but it's really, really small and I don't think they're in India. So I think you have just to be a little patient. And of course, don't forget with um, Sign Up, for example, and, and, and the label, you can make sure your music gets released in all other countries, at least on Spotify, and you can make money, revenue this way. In India, we will just have to wait. It's a big market, huge electronic music scene. I hope, I hope maybe this year. How useful is it to buy likes place on SoundCloud? It's not as useful as it was. And when we're speaking about buying place on SoundCloud, it's reposting because just buying someone to click on it doesn't do anything. It just looks weird having a lot of plays, no comments, so don't ever do that. It's just wasted money and you look like an idiot. If you do repost training or you pay someone to do it for you, yes, it helps a little because those plays are actually by real people and they might discover your song and actually follow you. What is the most useful thing I can buy to promote my music? So yeah, again, Spotify repost, if you have like 50 to maybe 250 euros available, and if you have more 500 and plus, the Spotify promotion thing might be worth it. At the end, usually with the Spotify promotion, if you have someone that does it really good, you get your money back within the first one or two months. So it's worth it, but you need to find those guys. How to find a good distributor? Um, it depends on which country, but in Germany, there is only Belief Digital and Zebralution. Those are the two big ones that are more specialized. or a little more specialized in electronic music. Then of course the majors, but then you have to have the major record deal. So um, yeah. It's, it's hard and you really need the business plan, the songs ahead and everything. Um, for like a normal musician, that's not the way to do it. On what things do I have to pay attention for my first release concerning rights and money so the label won't pull me over the barrel? <sighs> Honestly, just don't worry about it because they will anyway screw with you. Just think about your 10 first releases as uh, a business card. Hey, that's me. DJ blah blah blah, that's my sound, please listen to my music, please follow me and just make sure the label does the most for you concerning promotion. 
If they don't do any, just don't release with them. But don't expect any money. Um, no, just don't expect any money. Anyways, I think that's it with the question. The rest of the questions do not have anything to do with releasing. Mostly what equipment should I buy? I don't know. I haven't tested every single piece of equipment in the world. But let me show you um, a little bit of the progress I made today here in the studio. It's, it's, it's moving. Slowly, but steady. So, the pink room isn't pink anymore. It's all white, painted, looks beautiful. And also next door, the vocal booth. More isolation. And um, the, the, the box is also already in place to plug in your mic and headphones. And you might already be able to hear with the absorbing material. It already sounds better. Less reverb, no echo. This will be a really, really nice recording vocal booth. The second window will go in there, I think in one or two days. I will keep you updated with the progress. Tomorrow, another vlog, another construction day. See you. Hey.